Hi, I'm Rob Levin, and on behalf of the Work Better Now team, I'd like to welcome you to the latest episode of Working Better Now, a series on workbetternow.com featuring a Q&A with a successful business leader. Today, uh, we couldn't be more thrilled to be joined by Heather K. Margolis, okay. uh, founder and CEO of Spark Your, Spark Your Channel and Channel Maven Consulting. Uh, I'm really, I've been looking forward to this because uh, like myself, Heather is a serial entrepreneur. So we're going to get into that in a little bit, but Heather, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Let's jump right in. Heather, Heather tell us about your businesses. And I guess sure. since you have two, and I know they're both related, maybe how you got started in them. Yeah, absolutely. So Serial entrepreneur usually means you start a business, you sell it or, or somehow close it, and then you start another one. I didn't go that route. Um, so I started Channel Maven Consulting uh, 12 years ago. It's an agency focused on helping large IT companies better communicate to their channel partners and also drive demand with their channel partners. Um, and as part of that last part, especially over the last three years, we've just been feeling super constrained as to how these partners drive demand with these larger companies. So, you know, Google, Microsoft, Cisco, they, all these huge companies have channel partners that they help drive demand with, but the channel partners are also companies themselves. So um, I founded Spark. It's a fast based platform that allows the partner to grab some of the great content that these larger companies create, but they can personalize it before they send it out. So a video that has their intro and outro on it or a webinar that has their intro and outro on it. Um, and as part of this, Channel Maven is 12 years old. We've been running great. We have an amazing COO who's been running the company. Um, so I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day on the Channel Maven side, but Spark is, is an infant and uh, we're doing a lot of exciting things over there. The infants require some, uh, some extra yeah. care and attention. Yeah, apparently so you can't just like leave them. Right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So you, you just gave me the idea for a new term. Instead of serial entrepreneur, maybe we're parallel entrepreneurs. Parallel, um, masochistic, um, blood for punishment, whatever, whatever term you want to use that day. Masochistic probably works because we actually enjoy it. So, so yeah. yeah, I guess it, I guess it works somehow. Um, how did you get into this world of, of partners and channels and all that stuff? Um, sort of by accident. So I was coming out of business school. I went to business school full time and looking for a marketing role at a tech company. Um, and a very good friend of mine from business school was working at EMC and said, we have a channel marketing position open. Um, and I ended up working for this amazing woman, Cindy Herndon, who in my interview said, I'm going to teach you everything I know about the channel. And now we joke that she overshot a little bit because I've actually become the channel maven and, right. um, and eat, sleep and breathe everything channel. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it all makes, it, it does kind of make sense. There is a, a story, a logical story yeah. there. So you, you mentioned that you have a COO for, uh, for channel maven consulting. Tell us a little bit more about what your team looks like in both of the companies. I guess maybe focusing more on Spark Channel since that's where you're spending most of your time. Yeah, yeah. Well, and quickly, Channel Maven is uh, 25 people. They all have experience in the channel. Um, it, we had a ton of growing pains over the 12 years. You know, we we grew too fast with sort of um, people that didn't know the channel and we had to teach them and, and we thought teaching them wasn't gonna be so overwhelming and it became very overwhelming. Um, and then with Spark, we started, uh, we launched Spark, we announced February 20th. So we had an MVP, we were ready to go to market at February 20th of 2020. And everyone right. knows what happened in March of 2020. Right. So we were in the midst of raising money to be able to grow our team. And that didn't happen. So uh, we raised a little bit. We have amazing investors who, uh, even in the midst of everything going on with COVID, still wrote us a check in early 2020. And, um, and, but we couldn't grow the team the way we wanted to. So we started with one person who came to us from Work Better Now. And we're really just astounded by how professional they were, the experience they had had how good their English was um, and just 
how I already said it, but how professional they were. Um, so now we are up to on the Spark side. So we have um, a COO on Spark who's US based and someone I've known for over a decade. And then um, we have a customer success coach, we call them from Work Better Now. We have a sales and marketing assistant from Work Better Now. And we have what we call Spark growth specialist, but really he's a business development rep from Work Better Now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for that feedback too. So yeah. with, with, with both companies, um, you know, one established, one that's more growing, what do you consider your role as CEO to be? Well, just about everything to, you know, getting us fund funding to marketing the company, to selling the product, to overseeing the entire team. Um, when we had an office, I used to wash the bathroom and clean the bathroom on occasion. So, um, I think it, it really, when you're CEO of a company with fewer than five people, you're doing everything and, and you want to make sure that you're learning the best way to do it so that you can teach others how to do it. And I'm so fortunate to have COOs because I'm very much the visionary, like the, my COO on the channel Maven side, who's been with me for eight years, will say, I'll like walk into the room, drop a bomb of an idea, be like, this is great. And then walk out and everyone has to like figure out how to make that happen. Um, it's, it's certainly something that on the spark side, it's much more collaborative. Um, and we really need people to own what it is that they do, because I am not the most detail oriented person. I don't know many CEOs who are like super detail oriented and, right. and can stare at a spreadsheet for 10 hours. Um, so it's super important that the people we have doing the functions that they're doing can really be very self-sufficient. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, again, you have a more established company and then you have the new company. Do you see the role of CEO changing as the company, you know, goes from the different, from, from birth to the different stages? Oh yeah. I mean, on the channel Maven side, I check in once a month. I look at our financials. I look at our pipeline. And other than that, I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day or the project work. You really do have to hire very good people around you to be able to do that. Um, and then on the Spark side, you know, we've really only been in market about a year and, and truly only had clients banging on the platform for about eight months. Um, so on that side, I'm much more involved in the day to day and eating, sleeping and breathing and, and, you know, talking to investors and raising money and right. sell actually selling the product. Right. Gotcha. Terrific. So we, we, at, at WBN, we believe how you do things is just as important as what you do. What are some of the things that either company, either Channel Maven or Spark do exceptionally well? I would say we have an amazing reputation in our very small niche of the industry that we're in for being, our product is always the best. I mean, we, on the Channel Maven side, it's content, right? So it's the best content. It's incredibly well-written and thought out. We're always taking into account online engagement and SEO and, and keywords and all of those things. But people genuinely like working with our team. So they they feel like on, on both the Channel Maven and the Spark side, they feel like they're being respected. They feel like they're being um, heard that that we're not just saying, no, this is the way you do it. And, and I don't care that you have different goals than my other clients. We're really focused on making sure that they feel like they're getting the best of us. And really we become an extension of their team. Um, on the software side, we're the only platform in our industry that provides video. Um, really our goal is to make sure that our clients are getting what they want when they want and that they're using the best in class technologies and demand gen strategies to do that. Gotcha. Terrific. And, you know, in terms of how your, your team makes, just makes the client feel, feel terrific or clients rather feel terrific. Um, how did that happen? How did that come about? I mean, is that a cultural thing? Uh, is there tech technology? I mean, what? How does that it's happen? It's funny. No one's ever, no one's ever asked me that. But you know, when I think about the things for me that made the biggest impact, I didn't have a great corporate experience as I was coming up, 
Right. And um, there were a lot, there was a lot of competition from internal teams that just felt awful for me. So I always knew that when I built a company, I would make sure my employees never felt that, my clients never felt that. Um, on the other side, sometimes we've had to say to clients, I'm sorry, but we can't really do business with you any longer because they're not good to my team. They right. they don't treat my team well. Um, it's only happened twice, but both times it was worth losing that revenue to not have my team overly stressed. Um, you know, we work 80% of our life and I don't, I don't want people to feel the way I felt earlier on in my career where I really was miserable going to, I love working. I've been working since I was 13. I got a job in a hardware store and then worked at an auto body shop. Like I want to work, but I want to enjoy what I'm doing and the people that I'm doing it with. So I think it was out of my goal for building something that people enjoyed doing. And, and, you know, we certainly have had team members over the past 12 years who weren't happy and didn't enjoy what they were doing. And it was palpable. And I would rather have somebody that, that we enjoy working with or that we, um, can grow with than have someone who's miserable doing what they're doing. Sure. Yeah. And it's easier said than done. I, and, uh, first of all, kudos on, on, taking that vision and making it a reality because it's not you you make it sound easy but it's not that easy there are those challenges with customers and employees yeah um and, and you know it's funny we have a similar mentality at wbn a, a relatively new company as well where uh andrew who's the ceo who you know uh, uh and i decided very early on when he's speaking with a potential client if it sounds like they're going to be a problem and they're not going to treat our vas well we, we just can't help them. Yeah. And, 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 you know, in the beginning, it's hard to do that because every, every customer counts, but you make that decision, you stick with it and it, it pays off. Uh, well, it, and I feel like the VA is like, right. I already told you, we, we don't use them as virtual assistants. We use them as a sales and marketing assistant. I mean, right. our sales and marketing assistant's amazing. She's making memes for our social because she happens to know how to do some graphic design. Like, they're just things that unless you get to know, she started as our VA and I was like, right. that's a waste of your talent. We need to get you on the marketing team. Um, so I think you, ha you have to get to know members of your team, regardless if they're domestic and sit in the office with you or if they're virtual, um, right. like family. I mean, everyone on the Channel Maven and Spark team is an extension of our family and we want to get to know them and feel like we know what's going on. Today's Mother's Day in El Salvador. So two of our people are off um, and one of them's a mom and, and they both have moms. So like you just, it's important to me to grow a culture where you care about your employees as if they were family. Yeah, again, kudos for, for taking that idea and that vision and making it a reality it's not it's not that easy let's talk about technology for a second what how how does how do either of the companies use utilize technology to deliver a better customer experience or, or a better employee experience sure so i would say from the customer side like you're using a background right now i tend not to use backgrounds i have really big hair and it makes the it makes my hair look weird um no but uh, you've got the the follically challenged hairstyle yes. i get it my husband has the same one it's great uh low maintenance but we use zoom with backgrounds so they're always sitting in a spark your channel conference room much like yours and then we, um, we use internally, we use HubSpot. So anybody who's on doing anything with clients. So Hisel updates her client record when she's onboarded a partner and uh, Duver updates his client record when he's made an outbound call or has uh, sent somebody an email. So HubSpot for us is a really great way to manage everything that's going on from a sales and marketing perspective. Um, we also use Basecamp as a project management tool. And it's more like, I always say, do as I say, not as I do, because I am the worst one for updating my students. <laughs> but, 
Yeah. The whole team knows that they can assign me a to do. And if they assign it on either HubSpot or Basecamp, I will see it and I will do it. But right. if they shoot me a note and they're like, hey, when you get a chance, could you blah, 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 it's not going to get done. Right. You know, like I just sort of see it in my email and, and it doesn't, doesn't happen. But if I can see it in Basecamp or HubSpot, it'll get done. Gotcha. So you, you mentioned uh, a little bit about um, some of the things that your WBN assistants do. By the way, we're thinking of re renaming our assistants, calling them ninjas. What do you think of that? I like it. You might want to make sure there are no cultural issues. <laughs> Good point. Good point. We'll check that out. Note to uh, we, the editing team, please let it remind us to check that out. Good yeah. Point. We may even have different levels, but I'm getting ahead of ourselves here. So what what has what have the WBN VAs enabled enabled your company to do? I mean, we probably wouldn't have survived had had since we didn't raise the amount of money we needed. Right. We had all of these these positions that as we're selling the software, we really need people to fulfill. And, you know, when you first hear virtual assistant from Latin America, you're thinking just a virtual assistant, but these people have worked for Microsoft and Google, and they've been customer success reps and they've been marketing assistants. Um, and, you know, one that we spoke to had a master's in marketing. So it, I think the first thing is that you have to sort of dispel a lot of the, um, the ideas you have in your head of what, what a virtual assistant is capable of. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, when, when Irene was my virtual assistant, like I felt super spoiled and, and that was part of it, right? Like I'm in the middle of fundraising. I have a startup with five employees. One of them can't be keeping my calendar. Like it just felt like right. it felt a little gluttonous for me. Uh, if it were just for Channel Maven, I totally would do it, but we need right. to focus on what our investors are seeing us do as well. And then, um, I, you know, they really have taken control of the, the customer experience. So when we're onboarding a partner, I don't have time to do that. Our, um, we have a global account director he was getting bombarded. I mean, we were over, we were onboarding hundreds of partners a month. Um, so it, it just wouldn't have been possible. I don't know what we would have done. And, and we always try to, you know, the CEO and the COO can wear a lot of different hats, but when you get down to a certain level, you want to make sure that they have a core focus and a core goal. Otherwise they're going to get overwhelmed and not do any of the things. Right. 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 Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah. So when, when you're not being masochistic and, and running two companies, what do you like to do with your free time? Well, just to add insult to injury, I have a three and a five-year-old girl, two girls, and uh, we do a lot of bike riding and soccer. I live in beautiful Boulder, Colorado, so a ton of hiking, um, and we're really looking forward to things opening up a little bit here so that we can get back into the pool and, and get the girls swimming and, and camping and all the things you would expect a small family to do. My husband's also an entrepreneur, so that, you know, just to pile it on right um he owns a chocolate supplement company so totally different business right but um we like to get outside as much as possible gotcha heather thanks so much for for sharing all of these insights with us where can people find out more about you and your companies yeah so on linkedin i'm just heather k margolis and then channel maven is uh www.channelmavenconsulting.com and spark your channel is sparkyourchannel.com Simple enough. Heather, thanks again for spending some thanks, time Rob. with us and uh, we'll be speaking soon.